Good evening, everyone. Welcome along to another VCO Esports Studio with myself, uh, Ben Constant Juris. Fantastic to have you all along with us this evening uh, for, I think, what uh, I've counted at least as our 50th edition of the VCO Esports Studio, which is quite remarkable, having started around a year ago during the height of the pandemic. And now we've managed to chat to some of the leading names in the world of esport racing, whether it be organisers or drivers, or indeed some real world drivers that love their esports racing as well. And tonight we continue with that theme, a man who crosses his passion for real world motorsport and virtual motorsport and has experience in both. The leader of the world ERX uh, RCCO Championship. I think I've got that right. Uh, Lassie Sorensen joins us this evening. Uh, fantastic to have you along with us, Lassie. Do I get the, the name of the championship right? It's a bit of a long one, isn't it? Yeah, it's called RCCO World EX. I thought you had, I think you had one R too much. So, but that's, um, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> It is. Uh, yes, thank you for correcting me. Um, too many R's in racing. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about this championship because it's quite unique uh, in the fact that it's a bespoke vehicle on sometimes bespoke tracks uh, on uh, on a, a kind of bespoke platform and really born out of uh, a very unique place. Tell us more. Yeah, first of all, the car is, is very unique in the way that it has so much, uh, so many horsepowers that it's um, actually quite hard to handle, to be fair. Um, also driving the car, because the tire seems to be, uh, it's not like a Formula One tire on the car, so you don't have the grip that you expect a, a 1,000 horsepower car should have. So it's a pretty hard and very challenging car to drive, but also that's, I think that's something that makes even the racing even better for for also the spectators watching it. So all in all, the car is really fun to drive, and the championship, the way they do everything, is also totally different compared to to many other uh, championships. So um, it's a it's a really nice experience to to drive around in the World EX. So it's um, based on R Factor Two. That's correct, right? Yeah, it's R Factor Two, um, and it's a. a prototype car they built themselves um and they they keep you know making the car better uh, from round to round so every time you join a new round it's oh. it's kind of like a new car but obviously it still has some of the same um features that it had the last couple of races and it's got uh, an electric in theory an electric powertrain does that mean four-wheel drive as well yeah it's four-wheel drive and um Actually, the handling of the car is, is, is quite nice because you have the four-wheel drive. So it's not like it's super hard to go on power. Um, if you only had rear-wheel drive, you would probably slide a bit with them. Um, it would be more a drift car. But because of the tires we have on the cars, it's um, actually some corners are even faster to go like four-wheel drift, which is not what, um, especially me from, from real racing, is used to. So that was a, a totally different experience. But um, certainly something uh, I enjoy. And how did you get involved with it? Because I noticed also that you're part of the TK9 speed team, which is effectively Tom Christensen's team. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, basically Tom was invited to participate in the World EX. And um, I know Tom quite well and I've known him for many years now. Um, so when he got the invite, he, he just contacted me because he knew I was, was into eSport and um, we made an agreement on, on doing this championship together. Um, and yeah, now we are leading the championship and uh, won three out of five rounds. So that's like a huge achievement already here, I would say. So um, yeah, I think for the future, we're going to stay together. So is this the beginning then of Tom Christensen having an eSports team that might branch out into to bigger things is this the concept the idea uh basically he wanted to start in in the world ex championship and then uh, if something new was coming up he probably wanted to go into that as well but at the moment i don't really know where whether he will participate in in more championship than world ex but if he will do so i think at least i will be if i have the time to i will be a part of it Let's talk about you then, Lassie, because uh, you've had a pretty successful uh, single-seater career initially, and then you've moved into Euro NASCAR recently in the real world of motorsport and had a huge amount of success also in the virtual world. Yeah, it's it's kind of, um, 
when the COVID-19 situation hit the world, I was going more and more into to um, sim race, um, and and yeah, then I got this opportunity now, and and pretty much this year I've been full time on doing simulator stuff, um, but obviously I miss going onto the real racing tracks because I'm I'm I was born a real racing driver, and I will always be it will always be in my heart, I would say. So. Um, I'll keep doing the the esport driving when I have the time for it, but hopefully soon I'll, I'll be able to to do more uh, real racing as well. What was it like growing up as a Sorensen? Because of course your brother Marco as well, uh, factory Aston Martin driver, um, and so there must have been a huge sort of family thing going motor racing at weekends. Yeah, obviously when when. I, I was a little child. I was um, watching my brother driving. So, you know, my whole life has been has been something involved in uh, involved in racing. So, um, I, I cannot really think of anything else than racing. When I know now we have De- Denmark actually in the semifinals in football, but it's not for <laughs> me. It's not the same as as racing. So, I I I just love racing, even though it's on a simulator or or it's in the real world. It's um, it just has to be something with four tires underneath. Must have been pretty cool then uh, to see. Uh, I think you were entered into the Euro NASCAR Championship last year when they couldn't do it, obviously because of COVID. They introduced a, a virtual championship, which may well have been the very, very, very first championship to ever award points in the real world. Yeah, that was that was quite uh, different because normally. You know, you you expect the the big esports championship to be separate from each other. So you have the real racing, and then you have the esport. But then they took everything in a different way, and then mixed the whole thing, which was which meant I had to do all the races in esport, um, because that was quite important for my um, real racing career as well. So, um, but I mean, that was that was quite fun because then you really had um, more to lose, I would say, in the races. So you had. You had a more realistic feeling when doing the esport races, so um, that was quite nice. And the and the seriousness. I guess there are certain drivers in that championship that perhaps weren't so happy that they had to kind of adapt their skills because there is a need to adapt, isn't there, when you're transferring from real to virtual? Yeah, obviously it's it's coming closer and closer to the real world racing, but I say the biggest change and. Uh, when when I try to explain to to people what's what's the biggest change between esport and real world racing is that you don't really have to fear an esport and you you see people taking bigger chances in in esport racing compared to real life. So um, obviously it was a good benefit benefit for me that that I'm quite used to doing simulator uh, racing. So um, I was not really arguing with the Euronesca uh, organization to to do it different. So. <laughs> So where did the sim racing journey begin for you? Was it in parallel to your kind of karting single seaters? Yeah, actually it started when I was 13 years old. I'm 24 now, so it's yeah, 11 years ago. Um, but I did it back in the days. There was a game called Race 07. As I think some of the guys probably know that oh, game. Yes. Um, and I did the World Championship. There was like an unofficial World Championship in, in Race 07. And I did that when I was 13 years old. And... Uh, at that time, there was not like big money involved in. Still, it's still getting bigger and bigger, but uh, there was no money involved at that time. That was just uh, pure fun. Um, so I've always kind of been doing since I was quite young, been doing uh, esport racing. Um, but lately, I've been taking it more and more serious because I think also for the future we we are gonna see even bigger prize pools and even bigger championships. So definitely. Um, that's something I have to look into because um, it's getting harder in the real world to get to get a paid seat, but it's getting easier in the esports world. So um, I think I have to to train more now to to be a good esports driver as well. The World EX Championship, obviously on R Factor, but a very kind of bespokely modified R Factor two uh, for the championship. Do you have a preferred? platform one that suits your style better than others have you experienced other platforms yeah I've mainly I've been, uh, I've been doing um air factor 2 and and i racing that's that's the main pl- platforms i'm gonna race on um i would say air factor 2 is probably more uh, i can compare to my real world driving a bit more um i don't know why but i always had that feeling 
iRacing is more, um, I would say the the tracks in iRacing is more realistic, but the tire model in iRacing is, is not, for me at least, is not the same level as it is in Air Factor 2. Um, especially when we did the vir virtual Le Mans last year, um, I think that the mud they created for the virtual Le Mans was really comparable to, to racing the real car on, on Le Mans. So um, I would say that the favorite uh, platform would be Air Factor 2, but I am... Um, the, the, the time uh, the game I spend most time was uh, on is eye racing. And is that because even though it's less realistic in your eyes, it is just so accessible to just jump in, create a server, either go racing or practicing with your mates, invite random people in. It just seems to be that even if we don't necessarily feel like it's replicating the real life, it's it's the go-to place, right? Yeah, it's easy and, and uh, it's so simple. If you join the race in AirFactor at the moment, you have to do so many different updates and you have to get everything sorted out right before it actually works. Um, and I think that the, the time you spend on getting everything done right um, will be better spent time in iRacing because you, if you go on, even on a Monday evening, you go on to, to race iRacing, there's loads of different races and and basically it's in the races you get a you get to be a better driver of course you can do practice and stuff but it's it's the racing that makes you better i would say so um and i also think the competition at the moment in i racing is is stronger than it is in air factor 2 um so it it's it's better training to compete in i racing at the moment so you're obviously most known for this uh title um leading the championship in the r factor 2 world ex but do you have ambition or have you been participating in the high-end i racing special events and things like this um i mean i've been doing a couple of races i did the 20, 24 hours daytona and i did some of the bmw uh, 120 um so i've been doing some of the racing and and i was in the right end i was always top 10 when i did those races so um i've been uh, in there but the problem for me when i really was spending a lot of time in iRacing, racing um i had to do my real racing besides so i was not really able to compete in in many races so that's a new story now now i have more time and and hopefully for the upcoming iRacing racing top split races i will be there so is the ambition kind of now obviously you, you said earlier that you desperately want to get back in the paddock and, and racing is your life but it does sound as though you're looking towards uh, esport racing as a place where you can actually make a living in a in a more sustainable way than perhaps the the real world is right now. I think what what I'm trying to do now is actually trying to do both kind of. Um, I have a big plan for next year with my real racing. So um, I'm not going to race any cars un, unless some something comes up now. Um, so I'm going to use the whole whole. The rest of this year, I'm going to use to finding sponsors to get to um, NASCAR in America. So depending on the whole situation there, if, if I'm able to find the sponsorships to go there, then um, I'm going to do 100% eSport uh, when I'm home now. Um, but I'm still doing coaching and, and stuff like that for the real racing. So I'm still, I'm still away quite a lot of time uh, away from home, but um, definitely... In my perspective, I would say eSport has a bigger future than probably the real racing has. And is that in part why the World EX attracts you? Because as you said, it's being done in such a different way. There's an electric element to it as well. The promotion is so so different through VCO and various others that it does seem to be moving the barriers forward. Um, also, the thing with World EX is that I think that and you know the whole concept is based on getting the real car manufacturers into the world ex so like now we are driving all same cars but maybe for next year you can have an audi prototype car or you can have a bmw or, or whatever you, you you want um i think that the whole concept there because when you get the big brands involved in into the championships there's also bigger money in it so um I think the whole thing there it seems to be something good for the future, and that's why I'm I'm gonna spend a lot of time on it. Um, so and yeah, you never know where it, where it will end up. Well, I mean, and you're representing Tom Christensen as well right now. So 
how have the discussions gone with TK as to moving it forward and, and being able to fund a, a proper team like Kawanda or, or people like that? Um, I, I think definitely his plan is, uh, at least in, in the World EX Championship, to be um, to be the best team in the World EX. Uh, I, to be fair, I don't really know his plans for um, maybe moving into iRacing and doing some, some different championships there. Um, but I know he's 100% into it and he... Now he's he's in the progress of um, understanding eSport, right? Uh, he's still quite new to it, and he still has to see what's uh, what's good for him and what's not good for him. So, um, and that's where I'm I'm trying to help him as much as I can. Old boys, eh? I remember yeah. trying to get TK on a simulator uh, in Riyadh about four years ago, and there was uh, so many of the likes of David Coulthard and people like that just turning their nose up. But uh, now <laughs> it's a very different world, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, now he's, uh, to be fair, he's he's really into eSport. Like he's, when we do the World EX races, he's, um, we, we, we are always speaking on um, on TeamSpeak servers we have, and he's always there, like for the whole uh, race weekend. Um, and now I say race weekend, but it's like, it feels like a race weekend, but um, he, he's there all the time. So putting your relationship with TK aside for a moment, you personally, um, where do you uh, see kind of yourself moving forward, both in the real world, but also uh, virtually in the next kind of six to 12 months? Uh, obviously, yeah, the real world racing, I really want to go to America. So if that happens, obviously I'm going to be in America the whole next year and, and be I will be racing there. So I really cross my fingers that that it will work out, but um, it's it's a really hard way to go, and it really needs a lot of sponsorship backing up. Um, so if if that will not happen, I will probably end up going 100% into esports. Um, that that's where I feel I'm going. I'm gonna go. Um, whether it will be with my own team or or with a different team, I don't I don't really know. To be fair, um, but definitely I'm I'm gonna be in esports uh, until until uh, I'm not here anymore. So I'm going to be involved in this and I'm going to be racing in this. Uh, whether I have time, uh, whether I don't have any real racing or or, or, uh, or not, I will be in, in eSport and be involved in the different uh, championships. I get the feeling that eSports racing on ovals and, and the American style of racing that iRacing simulate actually would give you a huge amount of experience and understanding of how oval racing works in a way that perhaps circuit racing wouldn't so much because there's so much thinking going on in a, in a NASCAR race. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. Also, NASCAR is like uh, being on the right spot, uh, on the right time, also on the ovals and, and doing the strategies right. I think iRacing especially did, did the whole NASCAR, um, what do you call it, like the whole NASCAR category, they did quite quite well. Um, with the tire model and and how how the cars work in i racing is is quite similar to to the real real world. Obviously, I've not tried the cop car, but um, uh, I'm going to test the Xfinity, Xfinity car soon, so then I would know probably how how it's uh, how it compares. So um, I think also what I'm gonna do is is doing more NASCAR races and and oval races in in i racing to prepare myself for going to America. So um, yeah, I'm just going to see what the future will bring. And But one thing I know is that I will be in esports um, as long as it is, it's here. And presumably this NASCAR bug, has this come from doing Euro NASCAR or was it something that you wanted to do uh, even before you jumped aboard the Euro version? Um, actually, before I, I really wanted to go into GT racing, but the problem now is uh, it's really expensive to go into GT racing. And then I came across uh, Euro NASCAR, which was a more expensive, uh, not expensive, more cheap way to to go racing. And then, you know, when I, I when I went to the Euro NASCAR, there was a lot of uh, the, my sponsors back home in Denmark and and some of the people supporting me. They really thought that NASCAR and the whole concept behind NASCAR was really awesome. So. Then I thought, like, okay, then then let's go for for an SK in America and, and make that the goal. Um, obviously, I still have one of my biggest dreams is is um, is to win Le Mans with my brother, um, yeah. and I really need to have that done before I stop racing. So, 
if I'm not going to get to NASCAR next year, I'm probably going to start up a company and get rich, and then I'm going to pay the seat for me and my brother at Le Mans. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> That's you... exactly how so many people do it, isn't it? Like, especially the French. You look at the entry list of Le Mans, and there's a good 20, 30 gentleman drivers who have literally just paid their way in. So good good ambition, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, uh, you know the hopefully the, the biggest difference between me and the gentleman is that I will actually be fast as well so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly you've got a Sorensen name that's for sure um, yeah <laughs> just one more thing about NASCAR has there ever been a Danish NASCAR driver um, I think we only had Jan Magnussen doing one race in NASCAR so but he okay. never did the whole championship and he was not like a uh, a driver competing there for a whole season so that was only one race and and the danish do need uh, and now that tk is properly retired they need somebody to really get behind i've got they got you've got your magnusons but and you've got lots of people on off road but uh uh definitely uh to, i mean the thing about it is a country that starts following somebody so unique and doing something so different the whole country will get behind you yeah exactly but the thing is you have you have to you have to have a plan with everything. Like, um, if I'm gonna say I'm going to NASCAR in America, the whole the whole countries are going to support me if 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 it's possible to go there. Um, but you, if you don't have any plans or anything, and you don't really have any goals for for your racing, they're not even gonna spend one one thousand euro on you. So um, you really have to make a whole how do you say? It's not like a plan. It's more like a concept. You have to have a whole concept ready for for all the the sponsors that wants to support you and and to give them something back back for the sponsorship so um that's the hard thing i would say uh, about being a race driver at the moment it's like you have to be 80 85 percent um a businessman or what you call it um to to actually be able to race yeah but i think that's the same in so many uh different things whether it be in real world racing or indeed sim racing if you want to make money out of sim racing you still have to have that marketing head to realize the championships that are going to get that broadcast and for instance the kind of pr that vco and uh, rcco give your championship it, it does really mean that it's one of the the top end things right now and with the real world drivers as well that gives it an extra bit of flavor yeah, I totally agree with you. Like, um, I think it's it's in all racing categories, uh, as you say, uh, you have to be a businessman. You have to you have to think different than all the other guys to earn that extra bit of money. And um, I think that's something. If 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 I'm gonna go 100% into esport, then uh, I think that's something that's gonna help me a lot because I've been used to that uh, doing that my whole life pretty much. So. Um, I think it's a good experience to get, but it's it's still a hard way, I would say, in real racing because real racing just costs a lot of money. Like the the prices yeah. for racing in America is just so much higher than than having your own esports team here in Denmark. It's like nothing besides. So, um, but I agree that the more everything uh, is getting bigger and bigger, the more expensive everything gets, and the more money that there is involved in in it. So, um. Yeah, I totally agree with with what you say. Well, I didn't think that we were going to have a business conversation about the the <laughs> dynamics of real and virtual motorsport, but actually, uh, fantastic to hear from you, uh, Lassie, because you're going to be called Lassie over in America, absolutely, or or Lass. I don't know how they're going to work that one out. <laughs> um, that'll be on your PR sheet as well. Uh, but no, really cool to chat to you. Congratulations so far on on where you're sitting in the. Uh, the EX Championship, which of course you can follow uh, here on VCO, and uh, it's presented by Nikki Shields, I believe. So, uh, and Dave Richardson from DTM does the commentary. So it's a really good production team uh, around the whole thing. And uh, this man is is a championship leader with a couple of rounds left to spare. When's the next one? Uh, I think that's in two, three weeks' time. So um, yeah, there's still a long time cool. too, but uh, we have to be ready. Make sure you tune in uh, and see something very, very different in the world of esports racing. Thank you so much to Lassie Sorensen for joining us. And as you well know, every single week at eight o'clock, we have a new esports racing guest and we never really know who it's going to be. So until that point, uh, enjoy your sim racing. Bye bye for now.